Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, it's nice to have you with us again with our brain whisperer, Steve Campbell. How are you doing, I, Steve? Hi, everybody. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me again. Again. Gosh, we've been doing this for <laughs> Again and again now. and again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, you would think. Steve, we never get tired of you. You have... Uh, <laughs> You have a wonderful right. way of putting our mind at ease about our the way we think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The way we and the way yeah. we think, of course, affects everything we do. You know? Years ago, I would have said, "Oh no, that's embarrassing. No, no, no." And now I've learned. I just say, "You know what? That makes me feel really nice. Thank you." Well, and when I do that, it becomes a part of the way I think. So we all win. We all win. <laughs> um, my question for you today to get us started on a subject I think that everybody can relate to is it, it for me specifically it has to do with dieting yeah. but I think we all have those things that we're trying to accomplish whatever it is whether it's dieting or you know uh, some goal and we fail we yeah. make a mistake we get discouraged and they getting back on I call it getting back on the horse getting yeah. going again yeah is really, really difficult. And that's why, um, you know, sometimes I, after trying to do a diet, I give up or I have to wait a long time. Or mm -hmm. So what is it about our brain that, that in the face of failure makes us, oh, I don't know what you call it, not get back on the horse right away? Well, it comes from one part of our brain physiologically and it comes from another part of the brain psychologically. So the physiological is called the amygdala. It's a little teeny weeny walnut size organ really deep in your brain. And its job is to be very careful of, for protecting me. So it has what is called, called the fight or flight complex. Sure. If yeah. it sees something scary, it either fights it or it flights it, it flies away. The third ones, it freezes up, says, ooh, I can't do this, I can't do this. So we can talk about that, but I don't want to really get into that today. What I want to get into is the psychological part of that. And that is this, that all of us blow it. All of us shoot ourselves in the foot. And when I discovered that in psychology years and years ago, I can't tell you how, how relieved I felt. I thought I was the only one because I would set up all these, these goals and all this, and some of them I would meet, but so often I would just shoot myself in the, myself in the foot. And so I began studying, why is that? Why do I keep doing that? There's gotta be a reason for that. So let's talk about that today. So here's some principles that you can write down because I always like people to be able to write down things that they can take with them. So principle number one is that your brain hates to change. It hates change. Why would it hate change? Because its job is to keep you safe. And changing always brings in something new. It brings in something risky. You don't know the way you're going to be after you change. And your brain doesn't like that. The brain says, I don't want to change. I want to keep you safe. Well, let's not change. Let's not change. Let's not change. It may get really inspired, like I'm going to lose all this weight. But when it comes down to the weight coming off, the brain begins to get really uptight and say, you know what? If there's ever a famine, you would not be safe because you're losing this weight. <laughs> so let's not let's not do this so suddenly ice cream tastes 10 times better or chocolate cookie dough in the middle of the night tastes wonderful or i'll just have that second bowl of cereal no one will ever know so you really are fighting part of your brain to change so let's look at some techniques that can help you with that when you blow it because you always we do, we get knocked off our horse. Number one, when you get knocked off your horse, 
realize, number one, that your brain's listening to you and it's your choice to decide what to do. You can stay on the ground or get up and get back on the horse. That's your choice. You decide. Are you going to have to get up the horse more than once? It's going to be a lifetime thing. Life and change doesn't happen like this. It happens like this. And so number one, don't be surprised when you get knocked off the horse because it happens to all of us. Okay. When you do get off the horse and you're on the ground, you need to change the way you think. So here's what you do. And I'm now looking at the work of Dr. E.P. Seligman out of the University of Pennsylvania, who is the author of Learned Optimism. When you get knocked off the horse, you gain that five pounds back, or you spend that money, or you go shopping at the mall and buy everything, something that you don't want to do, etc. Number one, you isolate it, which means you say, okay, this happened, but it doesn't have to happen forever. And the nice thing about your brain is your brain agrees with everything you tell it. And your brain says, oh, okay, you're right. It doesn't have to happen forever. And when you get knocked off your pins, knocked off your horse, you can get back up. And the brain says, okay. The nice thing about your brain, and I've shared this with you so many times before, is that it believes everything you tell it, accepts it, you lock onto it, and it does everything it can to make what you're saying become a part of who you are. So number one, you isolate it. Number two, you realize that life is a living, is a moving picture. It's always changing. If there's one thing I can guarantee you, Art and John, is that tomorrow is going to be different from today. Guarantee. There's never going to be a tomorrow that you've ever had in your life. It's always going to be different. That's scary and that's exciting all at the same time. So when you say things will always be this way, I'll always gain this weight back, I'll always spend, your brain says, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. On the other hand, when you say, okay, I'm locking on to weighing 170 or 180 or 190, or I'm locking on to that. It's like when I was a little boy, my dad taught me how to ride a bicycle and he took me out to this field, took the training wheels off. And he said, before I give you a little, little shove, see that rock on the road? Don't run into that rock. And I locked onto the rock and I ran right into it. That's the way your brain works. You lock on to how much you want to weigh. You lock on to spending less. You lock on to all those things that you really, really want. And that's what the brain locks on to also. Yes, you're going to fall off the horse. But that's part of life. And it's part of you. And the scary part is when you say, I give up. No, 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 no. Because when you give up, your brain gives up. When you give up, that's a decision that you make. But when you lock on to that, your brain's going to give up too. So number two, you lock on to, I'm getting back up on the horse. I'm getting back up on it. Don't be surprised when you not get knocked off. You just get back up and get back on it. Number three, and this really began with the study of psychology way back in the, in the 1900s under the work of Dr. William James, who was the father of American psychology. We have this wonderful ability to change the way we think. And I use the word replace to replace what we are saying to ourselves about ourselves. So when we get knocked off the horse, we can say, oh, my gosh, it happened again. There's something wrong with me. I'm not being serious about this. The whole negative sphere that we go through 
Or we can say, oh, I got knocked off. That's all right. I can get up again. And I can get back on the horse. And this time I'll do it differently. I'll replace it differently. I won't go to that restaurant anymore where I just eat everything. Okay. Where I won't have chocolate chip cookies in my cupboard. I'll just make sure that I don't buy them. Or I make a point of just not shopping in that mall. And what's nice about the brain is when you lock onto those new things, those decisions that you make become easier and easier and easier to make. Why? Because, ready? Your brain's rewiring itself constantly. So the things that you lock onto become easier to decide to do next time and next time and next time after that. So how would I want to conclude this? When you get knocked off your horse, give yourself some space. Don't condemn yourself. Don't say, oh, you're really bad that you let this happen. Just say, you know what? I'm human. I'm Steve. I'm John. I'm Art. That's all part of who I am. Look at where I've come today and look where I'm going tomorrow. And I'm continually growing and learning and changing. I remember when I was going to work one morning years ago, and I was waiting for the light to change, and a kid came up in a very fancy car, looked at me, I looked at him. And I knew what was going to happen. The light changed. He went peeling out in front of me, roaring up the freeway, passing everyone. Passing everyone. As I watched him pass everyone, I had this epiphany. How many cars were already in front of him? Millions. How many cars are behind him? Millions. And so maybe, and I tell this to my clients, it's not a matter of how fast you get there. It's not a matter of how quickly you're losing that weight or buying the clothes. It's a matter of you're going in the right direction. But dear people, even when you go in the right direction, sometimes all of us run out of gas. We just do. It's a part of life. Some of us get a flat tire. Some of us even lose our way. But here's the wonderful thing about the brain that I want to share with your listeners. You can buy some more gas. You can replace the tire. You can get a map. And the wonderful thing about the brain is that even when you're off the horse, even when you're flat in the mud, you can get up and say, okay, this is part of living. I'm getting back on the horse and I'm going forward because that's what I want in my life. And I'm the boss. The wonderful thing about your brain is that your brain listens only to you, no one else. Well, what about what other people say to me? What other people say to you do not become a part of you until you agree with them. So you're the boss. You decide what you're going to do when you get knocked off the horse, including getting back on. Wow. Wow, that's very helpful. That really is. Um, if you expect uh, the ups and downs of life, falling off the horse, and then you can be prepared yeah. and tell yourself, you're getting back on and mm -hmm. keep, I love that you, you said going forward. I love that. Yeah. You're going, we're always going, going forward. Yeah. It's when we stop going forward, that gets us into trouble. 
Well, I'd like to say, well, I'd like to say, Steve, as always, thank you. Thank uh, you. There are a number of things where uh, I've fallen off the horse and I can't wait for this session to be over, not because it should be over. You've given a great message, but I need to get back in the saddle again. That's right. That's <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.